You know, I think the security industry needs more education earlier on. So let's talk to an expert about that. Secure Ninja. What's up, guys? We're back here with Secure Ninja TV. We're hanging out at the blogger meeting up uh, after uh, RSA 2019. I'm here with a personal legend of mine, Pete Herzog, creator of the Ostom. Uh, I uh, first came about uh, awareness of the Ostom with a 2.1. Uh, for me, immediately when I read that, there was a gold standard as far as frameworks. Uh, since then, uh, 3.0 has been released. Uh, would you consider that a platinum standard? Well, it's definitely leagues ahead of 2.1. I mean, a lot of people, with 2.1, we were still basing that, that the security industry actually knew what security was. And we were kind of following that whole pen test men, uh, mentality of, of just finding vulnerabilities and trying to break into them. And with 3.0, we made the huge leap to say, okay, pen testing should be about helping build security and understanding and analyzing. And so we actually brought in the analysis element, we brought in trust elements. Uh, we really went much further than what was just penetration testing. So it is, it is leagues ahead of what we did in 2.1, only because we, we looked at security, we, we just recent, we, we researched security again from the ground up, which is one of the things that very few people had actually done by that point, if anybody. Well, things changed in the, in the time period when those were released, right? Within the industry. I mean, the industry is now exploded. So relative to the time that 2.1 was released, we started getting a lot more interest, a lot more coverage in the industry as a whole, yeah? Well, it's more than that. The thing is, as technology improves, everybody thinks that better technology brings security, but security is the same for 5,000 years or more, okay? It's been the same. And the thing is, nobody actually looked into seeing what makes security. I mean, ask anybody in the industry, if you ask them what security is, they're not, you know, ask, ask anybody, they'll all give you a different answer for the most part. And the thing is that, we decided to investigate this because while we were actively penetration testing, we realized we couldn't measure anything. And so it was all qualitative. And that, that really made us think, wait a minute here, what's, what's wrong, you know? And uh, by, by looking into this and trying to fix this problem, it, it required completely re-understanding why security is what it is and, and really addressing that particular problem, which ended up being a lot. And now the nice thing about technology is like you said, it grows, which like like medicine for example, better technology lets you see deeper, lets you see lets you see more things you didn't see before. And that's what better technology did for us. It let us understand security in a way we hadn't before. That a lot more people were online, a lot more people were doing things. Now we had a lot more uh, a lot more research in the sense that we, we, we could actually see what was really happening. And we learned that best practices were something that somebody was doing, saying it worked for them and everybody else was copying. It didn't necessarily mean that it was the right thing to do or work for everybody. And I think that was really the big leap that we made. Similar to medicine, the fundamentals stay the same, yeah? Right, right. The fundamentals, security is security. And the things that we've learned for 3.0 are not going to change, and they have it. They might improve as we get more knowledge. I mean, that's what a science is, right? So once you, once you understand something, you can improve upon that knowledge. And sometimes with science, things change. But for the most part, that's not going to change. We have some very strict fundamentals now that, that we, we absolutely know are, that's, that's how it is. And then we can only improve upon that because obviously the more you learn, the more you know that certain things are broken, like identification. Uh, you can't take that any further than you are right now because uh, so many different controls are based on identification that it's only gonna really mess up future products, future everything. Um, the only thing that working in the industry, one of the things you hear is that when you ask these questions, you say, what are you gonna do once you get to the point that this identification method, identifying threats, identifying this and that doesn't work for you anymore. The answer is usually the same. Well, we'll keep going until the customer figures out it doesn't work. Fair enough. Uh, so since the release of the Awesome, you've actually moved on to at least uh, one other very new interesting project, uh, the Hacker High School, yeah? Can you tell us a little bit more about uh, Hacker High School? Sounds like really cool and actually, uh, cutting, uh, you know, heading it off at the pass, yeah? 
Well, that's the thing is back in 2003 is when we started Hacker High School. It didn't really get picked up anywhere until about 2014, but we, we really pushed. And we found that uh, we thought we could bring into schools by teaching teachers, but that didn't scale. Okay, that didn't work out. So we rewrote all the lessons so that the, the students teach themselves like hackers do, you know, so that they learn like hackers. And that was the best way to bring it into a classroom so you could work with teachers who didn't know. They could do something like they call gradeless learning where, where the, the kids support themselves, they, they basically uh, present to the class, they work in teams, this kind of thing. And uh, so that's what really took off once we, once we changed the lessons. But it's, it's old, it's been since 2003. And the reason why uh, we have Acker High School is because when we did the Austin, and we were certifying people in it, we found that uh, the younger they were, the better they did. And it turns out that they didn't have to unlearn all the, yeah, all the all crap that they, happen. yeah, exactly. Right. So, so we, we, we thought about it. I, I went to the university near us, LaSalle, and I said, uh, how young do you think we can go? And that's what we tried. And we, we ended up, I think, within months, we wrote all 12 lessons, which later in, in 2012, we rewrote. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was, it was a no-brainer. I mean, young people can learn this stuff easily. It's they're sponges. So more challenge lessons than book lessons, eh? Oh yeah. I mean, teens. One of the things that took so long from so in 2009, we already knew we had to rewrite the lessons, but we didn't know how teens learn and think. So we actually we had this whole section within within Isacom, our organization, where we were we called it a uh, uh, neural hacking. So we tried to figure out how the brain works and, and the tweaks that you can do. And of course, the biggest focus was on teens. How do teens learn? Well, they learn through narrative. They, they learn through exercises and repetition. They learn through, there's a lot of different things that's different than adults. And you can't just say, don't do this, because then they'll do it. So instead, you know, where we say a little knowledge is dangerous, well, we try to give them more than that so that they know enough knowledge that they can get caught. And uh, so since the um, uh, release of the, you've been working with the Hacker High School, seems to be starting to take off. Have you revisited the Austin? Well, yes, actually. Uh, so Hacker High School's taken up a lot of our time these days. We get about 300,000 downloads a month. Uh, and we've got a, a model school in Oahu, in Hawaii. Uh, uh, M Mililani, I probably said it wrong. Um, and uh, at that model school, we've been actually trying things and doing things. So it's been a lot of work and we're trying to get this, uh, trying to make sure that it works right so we can bring it out to all the other schools. We've got the books and, and that. So Austin has not uh, directly been worked on. I did release a draft. It got shot down by, by the reviewers. Uh, so we have, a, we, we have a, in our internal team reviewers. And then, which was upsetting to me, but at the same time they were right. You know, so the problem was is that we had so much push to get Austin Four out that I just wanted to get it out, and I didn't give it enough time to explain the changes we made. So it was very confusing to people, and there's a lot of changes that we were working on that we couldn't complete. So this being incomplete obviously was confusing to people. So we tried to work with new tests for dealing with the fact that identification is broken. Uh, we have new methods for improving how penetration testing is done to, to understand uh, which controls are missing. Uh, and, and basically, and I know the industry hates to hear this, but to stop relying on vulnerability management, patching and, and logins, passwords, uh, security training as your default uh, one stop for preventing security problems because you can't outrace the criminals and we have to build it in there's no if ands exactly. there's no in between uh, otherwise we wind up in the dutch boy situation right and we only have so many fingers yeah that's absolutely true so what we're trying to do is is show them through better testing and analysis how they know and, and make it easier for them to fix things. Deal with, for instance, vendor security where uh, you can't test them directly. So we came up with an indirect test that still uses the Austin, uh and, and uses uh, attack surface metrics and trust metrics. So you can come within uh, anywhere from five, about 5% 5 off from an actual test from testing somebody, but you would, you would actually know if this vendor is secure or not without actually having to penetrate. 
And so if I could just ask a personal question, I think you have uh, some juniors yourself. So what's that like? Uh, are they, uh, have they been through the Hacker High School program and uh, do they lean on dad to, uh, to do their homework and that kind of stuff? And is that uh, exciting for you to see your, your little ones uh, kind of uh, uh, follow in your wake? Well, actually, so yes, I have uh, my my two I, I my two older daughters have have worked with us. They've done they they can solder, they can they can do all of this cool. stuff. Awesome. Uh, the oldest one is now eighteen. Um, the they have hacker in their blood for sure because when you're a hacker, you live as a hacker. You're always trying to test things and improve things, and I'm always encouraging them to just try it. You know, so. That is true. I've got two younger boys then. I've got four kids all together and, and, uh, and they're coming up through it. You can see their excitement when they do it. The problem is, is that there's too few schools picking up Hacker High School. So I can't just give them the official program. I can't just enroll them somewhere, which is what's needed. Instead, they actually just have to work with me, it's, which is good. I mean, it's like an internship, right? It's just, it's just not a formal learning, which other kids could have if their schools adopt it. Well, I mean, it's one thing I've always seen in children is that, you know, children are not afraid to fall or fail. Why? They're closer to the ground. So it hurts less, right? So they're like, let's do it again. I remember I was snowboarding on the mountain. I would throw anything I wanted. Well, why? Well, because I, 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 I fell much shorter. As I got bigger and I had to fall a lot harder, similar to as an adult, well, I don't want to make those mistakes. That fail uh, feels a little different than when I was younger. Yeah, absolutely. But the problem is, right now we're dealing with society that gives them rewards for trying uh, and not succeeding. So they have no real incentive to keep trying again and again and again because they've tried. Right, And this is a big problem that we're fighting against because the hacker mentality is to keep trying until you do it right. Keep trying something different. You're going to fail a lot, but eventually you'll succeed. It's like the scientific methodology, but instead of accepting the conclusion, you try something else to get the conclusion you want. Well, I think that's about uh, all the questions I have. Is there anything you'd want to add? Uh, I would love to... I would just love to see Hacker High School in more places. I, I think that there's really a, uh, there's room for this in schools. It's necessary. You have all of these people in technology, all these kids who have no clue what they're doing. Uh, cybersecurity field is way open and, and hiring. We, we need so many new people uh, from different, I, I hear everything from two million to, to two and a half million by 2020. I don't know uh, where they come up with the numbers. But the great thing is, College isn't for everybody, and getting into security at least gets you an income, a decent income, until you want to go to college, or, or maybe you do go to college, but this is a way out and actually pay some of those student loans. <laughs> Fair enough, sure. Well, thank you again so much for your time. It's really nice to meet you, Pete. Really personal legend. You're doing great stuff. Hope to be a part of it myself, and really want to thank you for your time with us. You're welcome. Thanks a lot. All right, it's a wrap. Thanks again for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe below if you're not already. Uh, again, I'm Lady 3Jane, and I'm out of here.